And as the last boat pulled up anchor and left fishless, we felt a sense of relief. Finally, we had a level playing field. To a swimmer, a fin this big spells get out of the water fast. But to fishermen like us, this massive but harmless sunfish is a good omen and means the next marlin hookup can't be too far away. Throughout most of the action so far, Grantley had been behind the lens of our camera. But as a dedicated land-based game fisherman, there was no way he was going to miss out on a shot at the fish of a lifetime. After watching so many defeats, he knew as well as anyone what he was in for, and he was ready to go one on one. Hooked up on a short stroke of rod, Grantley certainly had the leverage equation working his way. He doesn't even know he's hooked yet. Unfortunately, life on the rocks is tough on tackle. Dusty roads, long bushwalks, and dry windswept platforms take their toll. High-tech gear designed for boat-based game fishing gets pushed to extremes. Caked with road dust and bone dry, Grantley's roller runners were soon howling in protest. Hardly the time to do your tackle maintenance, but better late than never. Without being under siege by boats, at last we were able to let a fish do its fighting out wide, well away from the dangers of the rocks. A good dose of fresh water shifted some of the road dust and finally got the rollers working properly. With the line singing in the breeze, we all had our fingers crossed. After one screaming run of half a kilometre, the fish eventually turned with less than a hundred metres to spare. <laughs> But when the marlin finally came in, things didn't go to plan. Disaster threatened as the fish arced into shallow water on the far side of the point. With Jeff's defeat still fresh in his mind, Grant decided to take advantage of low tide and meet the fish halfway. Hemingway's book, it was about now that the old man ate raw bonito to keep up his strength. We offered Grant some, but he said he never eats raw fish without the sauce.
After a decade of hard work, Grant's greatest fishing ambition was now a reality. Well done, son. Oh, very, yes. very happy for you, mate. Oh. Well, it's a team job. Thanks, yeah. fellas. Yeah. You've done well. At 72 kilos, this was the holy grail that had inspired us to start our journey. But the story wasn't over yet. What is it about fishing that has such universal appeal? Maybe it's because it's the greatest of all equalisers. Regardless of wealth, gadgetry, expertise or how good you think you are, all you really need is a bait in the water to be in with a chance. This was the 100 kilo fish we'd all been chasing. It was Carl's first season on the rocks. First hook up. Of all the different types of anglers, land-based game fishermen must be the supreme optimists. To actually believe that you can hook a fish of this size from the rocks and have a fighting chance of landing it flies in the face of probability. But whether he lands this marlin or not, Carl has already experienced fishing that most of the world's greatest anglers never have or never will. Perhaps the outer limits of fishing really are the product of your own imagination. I wonder how many other fishing challenges are yet to be realised because no one has yet dared to imagine them. The fight's never over until the fish is on the rocks, and Lady Luck can desert you as quickly as she arrives. Carl's dream run had suddenly turned into a nightmare. The line had tangled around the fish's tail, something that all marlin fishermen dread. It's impossible to turn and lead a big fish back to the rocks when you're fighting it from the wrong end. Landing the giant marlin was now all but impossible, Tail wrapped and sinking, it soon snagged up on the bottom. To a sport fisherman, losing the fish of a lifetime is bad enough. But knowing that it won't live to fight again is just devastating. Nobody wins. He's uh, gotten the better of me. You've seen how you're stuck on the bottom here. And I'm now just contemplating on what to do with him. Let's just walk back or break the line or try something else with it, I really don't know. It's the first moment for me, and I'm looking forward to having another go at another one. Right now, I really don't know what's options. Options. To a fisherman, where there's line, there's hope. And rather than just break the line and call it quits, Carl decided to go for a real long shot. While Martin and Andrew cut and tied his line to the rocks, Grantley and Pete set off on the long trip back to town to get a boat in the hope of raising the dead fish off the ocean floor. Hours passed and as we waited we weren't even sure our idea would work. It had never been done before, maybe we were just clutching at straws. Grantley and Pete finally arrived and with darkness approaching it was a race against the clock.
sending a cliff gaff down the line, hooking the tail wrap marlin off the bottom was just too easy. We'd come so close. At 116 kilos, Carl's marlin was the class of fish we now dared to hope for. But land-based game is more than just the fish. To us, land-based game is a complete journey, an ideology, a way of thinking, even a way of life that involves finding, hooking, fighting and landing a game fish from the shore. Using the boat to land the fish had saved the day, but left the ultimate prize unclaimed. Beautiful fish. Look at that. There we go. That one is really Story over. <laughs> you can get a better smile than that, mate. Patient, patience pays, hey? Patience pays. Our season was coming to a close. As the tip of the current continued its journey down the coast, so the marlin would follow it out to sea, to once again become the exclusive domain of blue water game fishermen. Whether you landed, lost or just saw a marlin hook from the rocks, it was a unique experience that would stay with you for life. As Andrew had his moment in the sun, it was obvious there were no winners or losers. As sport fishermen, we'd all been forced out of our comfort zones and had become better fishermen. In land-based game, the risks are great. With the freedom to fish the rocks comes the responsibility for your own safety. Each season, many more fishermen than marlin will lose their lives on the rocks. Even the greatest fish in the ocean is not worth losing your life over. And so was the closing chapter on our journey. The men and women who sport fish the world over share a love and respect for the environment. By taking on impossible odds, sport fishermen find more enjoyment in catching less fish. After all, the great game fish may well be our opponents today, but without them tomorrow, our sport is nothing. Land-based game fishing is not something you take on lightly. It's 99% bushwalking, horizon gazing, dreaming, and years of hard work. But all this, and the occasional moment of insanity when a big fish takes a bait combines to make the whole experience an unforgettable and addictive one. At the start of our journey, we'd set ourselves the challenge of documenting a unique style of fishing and a special breed of fishermen. And what we captured both on film and line was beyond all expectation. That 100 kilo fish we'd begun to hope for is still out there. But what comes after that? Marlin off the rocks on fly? The challenge is now for sport fishermen the world over to continue the quest. But until next summer, all that was left for us was to use the trip home and the long winter that was to follow to dream of the new season and to reflect back on the best season ever in the history of our sport, when the great marlin visited us for a few awesome days on the rocks and the outer edges of sport fishing were changed forever. Yeah.